Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Eclipse Timer series. I'm teaching you how to build a little Eclipse Timer where we can watch the moon go right over the sun in our Access database. It's pretty cool. Here we go. If you haven't watched part one yet, watch part one first, then come on back. All right, so yesterday we set up our form. We got our table built so we could put our different locations in. One thing I forgot to mention, if you want, come in here and turn back on under format the navigation buttons and the record selectors so you can switch between different locations if you want right so you can put Dallas there you can go to the next one you have a Buffalo in here and so on all right I'm just gonna work with the one location if you want to put multiple locations and go right ahead they're your Legos put them together however you want now since we can't draw circles in a form we gotta make a report so let's just make a blank report I've already got a blank report R here I'm gonna copy that guy copy paste but you can just create a blank one if you want to I'll call this my Eclipse R my Eclipse report let's open her up design view now there's some stuff in here that I put in here Oop, wrong thing there's some stuff in here that I put in here come on I can't click today there's some stuff in here that I put in here that I don't need I don't need that we don't need a page header footer we don't need a report header footer we're literally just gonna work with this detail section and it's about what eight inches across okay what are my margins set to page setup uh, I think I got little tiny margins. That's good. That's perfect. In fact, you can make these smaller, but it, you can't get that much smaller. You can set up custom size reports and all that, but again, I, that's way beyond what I want to go over today. We're just going to work at this little region right here. So when we open up the Eclipse report and print preview, it's going to look like that, but we're going to move it over here and we're going to resize it and we're going to zoom it in because one of my pet peeves of the reports is they don't keep their size and dimensions and stuff like forms do. And you get back where I put you. That was that was a goof. Okay, so first let's open up the report where we want it. Okay, how do we do that? Well, let's go in here, design view, and our hello world button is now going to be called the show eclipse button. Okay, right click, build event. What are we going to put in here? Well, we don't want to say hello world anymore. What are we going to say? We're going to say show eclipse. Just like that. No, seriously. Seriously, though. I'm going to make this its own sub because we're going to call it from other places, too, in a minute. So, private sub show eclipse. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to do is if this report's already open, I want to close it. Because as we click like our little button to add a minute, we want to watch the little the little moon move across the sun, right? We have to close the report and open it. Yeah, you could try to require and redraw the report. It's just easier to close it and open it back up again. But I don't want to have to go through too much craziness to try to determine if the report's already open. So I'm just going to try to close it and ignore any errors that pop up. Because if it's not already open, it'll generate an error. And the way we get around that is real simply on error, resume next. Then we... Do command close AC report, eclipse R, and then AC save yes. And then when we're all done, we turn that error handling off on error go to zero. That's the easiest, simplest way to say, hey, close that report if it happens to be open without going through a ton of code to try to programmatically determine if the report's open. Can you do it? Yeah. But this this works. This is this is fine. I'm all about practical solutions, and this is simple. All right, now we're going to do command open report the Eclipse R in print preview mode. You see view preview. Okay. And let's see what that looks like. Come back over here and we'll do one of these jobs, right? Show it. Oh, okay, but I don't want it there. I want it over here. Okay, so we can issue a move size command after we open it. We're going to say do command dot move size. Where do you want to move it? You can write down height with it. So you can move it and size it. This is just, you got to kind of set this up based on your preferences. I'm going to guess, let's go 7,000 pixels from the left, right? Maybe 100 pixels down from the top because we don't want to write up against the top. And then let's go 10,000 wide by 5,000 tall. That's just a guess. Let's see what it looks like. Save it. Hit the button. Boom. Okay. All right. That's not too bad. I'm going to close my navigation pane. Okay, that's about where I want it. Let's move it a little bit more to the right. So I'll say maybe 7,500. That'll be based on the size of your main menu, right? 7,500. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's better. I like that. The width is good. Okay, 
let's uh now what i want to do is I, i'm going to be working just with this top portion of the report so i want it like just like there so i can see that that much of it so now we're going to zoom in okay come back over here next command is going to be do command dot run command accmd zoom and there's different zoom levels i'm going to zoom into 100 percent okay save it close it and let's open it back up again and boom oh that looks good that's right where i want it to be and we're going to put the little sun and the moon in here okay okay let's start out by drawing the sun all right let's go design view of the report detail section right click build event we are now in the detail format section okay how do you draw a circle well we're going to say me dot circle and then you've got in parentheses you've got the x and y locations right in pixels and then comma the radius in pixels so for example let's say you want to go uh, 2000 pixels from the left 1000 from the top comma 1000 radius okay so it's x y radius why the parentheses on that's just how they did it all right let's see what that looks like come back over here hit show eclipse and boom there's your circle okay that's pretty cool all right so it's 2000 pixels in from the margin 1000 pixels down that's where the center of the circle is and then a thousand pixels for the radius all right you can make it bigger smaller whatever all right now how do we fill it in and make it let's say yellow for the sun well let's come back over here before you draw the circle you're going to set those parameters all right so i'm going to put in here draw sun right so we're going to say me dot fill color equals you can use rgb if you want or you can use one of the named constants like vb yellow okay and then me dot fill style equals zero is filled in versus transparent okay all right save it back over here show eclipse remember it's going to close the report and reopen it and oh look at that now we got a yellow little sun guy there right okay i'm going to move it over more though because i want to have room for the moon to move over the sun's going to be pretty much static so let's come over here and up top here i'm going to say let's let's put a, a spot for where we want totality to be so we're going to we're going to make a constant constant totality equals let's let's try six thousand pixels that's the x location for totality and then i'll replace that down here okay because we're gonna we're gonna be moving things around in a minute all right let's save that let's see what that looks like and okay that's good that's, I, I i picked that because it's in the center of the page kind of right and if you you know want to print this out or if your screen's bigger i'm working in a little video window here so you'll see the moon come over here and start to slide across it so we'll, we'll work with that that looks pretty good all right let's draw our moon next all right so let's come down here and we're going to draw the moon now we're going to say me dot fill color equals vb black that means the next object that gets drawn is going to be black okay and the me dot fill style should still say zero so you don't have to reset that you can if you want to that's okay now let's move the x back to like let's see we're at six thousand now for the center let's bring it back to like maybe four thousand or three thousand so let's say me dot circle we're going to go back let's go to three thousand uh, 1,000, because we want it the same Y, right? The same distance from the top, so it slides over the other one, right? And the same radius. Although later, we're going to tweak it and make the sun just a little bit teeny tiny smaller, because one of the reasons why we have total eclipses is that the, the moon is a little tiny bit bigger than the sun, and it can, it can cover it for more than a few minutes. And, and also, since the moon's uh, orbit is an ellipse, it can also be a little further than necessary so that it doesn't quite cover the sun that's when we get annular eclipses right you can still see the ring of the sun around the moon because the moon can go further and closer away by many many miles and that's what determines how long of totality we get right so we're gonna we're gonna cheat later and make the sun just a little bit smaller in fact we'll do it right now let's make it 940 i was playing with these numbers earlier 940 is about right that's where you don't quite see a sliver of it and you get like four minutes of totality 
So this value here can actually change based on how far away the moon is from the Earth. Uh, astrophysics, right? <laughs> That's my other backyard passion. I'm a backyard astronomer. I love this stuff. Star Trek and astronomy. <laughs> All right, so let's see what our black circle at 3,000 X, Y, and then there's the radius. Let's see what this looks like. Come back over here, hit the button. And, oh, there's our moon. All right. Okay. Now we just got to work on sliding that guy across to the right. And we're going to tackle that, guess what, in tomorrow's video. So you know the drill. Tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now. So sign up and become a member, and you can get all this in. <laughs> But that's going to do it for part two. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. 
Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.